Do you know what to do to help make your immune system as strong as possible so that it can fight off infections? Do you wonder if taking vitamins and supplements might be a good idea right now? What else do you need to do to prevent catching a bacterial or viral infection? By the end of this video, you'll have the information that you need to improve the function of your immune system. By subscribing to my channel and hitting that little bell, you'll be notified every Monday when I post a new video that's designed to help you navigate this sometimes confusing healthcare system. Good morning, health-minded people. I'm Dr. Snow. And over the years, my patients have asked me multiple times what vitamins and supplements they can take to help them ward off colds, the flu, and other infections. Well, I'm afraid that there isn't one pill or supplement that cures all ills, but there are steps that you can take to improve your immune system so that it works better for you. First, make sure that you're getting plenty of sleep. Did you know that your body heals itself when it's asleep? Lack of sleep can increase your risk of infection and can slow your healing ability. By getting at least seven to eight hours of sleep every night, you can decrease your risk of catching a cold. Teenagers need eight to 10 hours of sleep every night and younger children need even more. Second, eat a balanced diet. Your diet should consist of mostly whole foods and stay away from the processed foods. Most of the nutrients have been stripped from processed foods and you're just getting empty calories. Raw fruits and vegetables provide phytonutrients and antioxidants. Fiber from fruits and vegetables help maintain a healthy gut. Fermented foods such as sauerkraut, yogurt, and kombucha can help contribute to gut health by providing good bacteria, which can limit the overgrowth of the bad bacteria. Green leafy vegetables provide vitamin C, vitamin K, and folate, which contribute to a healthy immune system. Include kale, spinach, chard, and dark green and red lettuces in your daily diet. Lean protein is important because all the cells in your body, including your immune cells, are made up of proteins. Incorporate lean chicken, lean beef, fish, and legumes such as beans into your daily diet to provide the building blocks that your body needs to stay healthy. Healthy oils such as olive oil and coconut oil are anti-inflammatory and inflammation can suppress your immune system, which is bad. Also, you need a good source of omega-3 fatty acids that are found in cold water fish and chia seeds. Stay away from sugar as much as possible. Sugar can also increase inflammation, and we've already said that was bad. Also, sugar can contribute to obesity, and obese people have been shown to get more colds and flus than people of normal weight. You should limit your daily total sugar intake to 25 grams or less to support your immune system. Drink lots of filtered water. Water flushes out the toxins in our bodies. Tap water, whether from the city or from many wells, can contain pollutants that you do not want to consume. By using a good quality water filter, you provide hydration so that your body can filter out toxins without putting more toxins in. And yes, reasonable doses of vitamins may be appropriate. Your immune system does need vitamins to work properly, but mega doses of vitamins at best are a waste of money and at worst are dangerous. Good doses of vitamins include vitamin C, 1000 milligrams twice a day, vitamin A, 10,000 international units per day, vitamin D, 2,000 international units per day, and vitamin E, 400 international units per day. Please note that vitamins A, D, and E are fat-soluble vitamins, which mean that you need to be eating a little bit of food that has some fat in it for the vitamins to be absorbed properly. 
It also means that these three vitamins are stored in fat cells so that it is possible to build up to toxic levels if you're taking too much. Never take more than the recommended amount on the bottle unless directed by your physician. You should also get folate one milligram per day, especially if you're in childbearing years. Iron, selenium, and zinc are not vitamins, but are essential minerals that are important to the immune system. The recommended dose of iron is 325 milligrams daily. Iron should be taken with vitamin C because the vitamin C helps your body absorb the iron more efficiently. One study showed that a lower dose of iron might still be beneficial, especially if you're having side effects and can't tolerate taking iron every day. This study showed that 325 milligrams of iron with 500 milligrams of vitamin C taken once a week showed similar results to those patients that were taking it once a day. This may decrease the side effect of constipation in those who are susceptible to it. Good sources of selenium include beef, tree nuts, some types of fish, and whole grains. Most people who eat a good diet get plenty of selenium. You need about 55 micrograms of selenium a day to stay healthy. You may need slightly more if you're pregnant or nursing, but you need to consult with your physician as to how much selenium they want you to have. Other people who might suffer from selenium deficiency include those with intestinal disorders such as Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. Your physician should be able to recommend a dose of selenium supplement if needed. Zinc not only supports the immune system, but is also involved in wound healing, blood clotting, and thyroid function. There is some evidence that zinc may decrease the symptoms and severity of colds, but the exact mechanism of this has not been discovered. The recommended daily dose of zinc is 50 milligrams. Next, exercise, both aerobic and strength training, may help flush out bacteria and viruses from your lungs and respiratory system, decreasing your risk of getting a respiratory infection. Exercise also has been shown to decrease stress hormones, which have been shown to increase your risk of infection if they stay elevated for an extended period of time. Moderate exercise may help support your immune system, but don't overdo it. Excessive exercise may do more harm than good. So your goal should be 30 minutes of aerobic exercise, such as brisk walking five days a week, with two days a week of approximately 15 minutes of strength training. I know no one has ever told you this, but you need to wash your hands, especially when you've been outside of your home touching surfaces that someone else might have touched before you, or when you touch money. Money is gross. Money is great in your bank account, but it's disgusting in your hands. You don't know who touched that money before you touched it, and you don't know what they had been doing when they touched the money. Yuck. Just yuck. Wash your hands. Another way to support your immune system is to stay current on your vaccinations. Vaccines work by stimulating your immune system into working better. Make sure that you stay up to date on any recommended vaccines such as tetanus, pertussis, diphtheria, influenza, and shingles if you're over 50. To learn more about what vaccines adults need, watch this video. Stop smoking. Smoking increases your risk of infection, including the one we are currently battling. Smoking also decreases antioxidants, which help protect us from disease. And secondhand smoke affects everyone around you in the same way. So just stop smoking. I am not the first person that's told you this. Next, limit alcohol consumption. Alcohol kills off the bacteria in our gut, both the good bacteria and the bad bacteria. This decreases your body's ability to fight off any infection that enters by this route. Alcohol can also affect the immune cells in the lungs, decreasing their ability to fight off respiratory infections. If you want to enhance your immune system, you need to limit the amount of alcohol you drink. 
Finally, laughter is the best medicine after all. Laughter reduces stress by increasing circulation and causing muscle relaxation. Laughter releases endorphins, which are painkillers, and neuropeptides, which are feel-good substances that your body naturally produces. Laughter helps you cope with difficult and stressful situations. Laughter decreases depression and anxiety, thereby relieving the amount of stress on your immune system. So laugh often and long. Watch a funny movie. Play with your children. Act silly with your spouse. Call a friend and retell funny stories of events in the past. What is your favorite way of having fun? Leave your comment below so that the rest of us can try your ideas. If this video has helped you understand how to boost your immune system, please press that like button and consider subscribing to my channel so that you can get more information on how to stay healthier. So which of these tips on strengthening your immune system are you going to try today? Type your favorite in the comments below. Start with one step, then add another. Pretty soon you'll be well on your way to a stronger immune system and better health overall. Thank you for joining me today to learn new and maybe old ideas on how to strengthen yourself and specifically your immune system. Stay healthy, wash your hands, and have a blessed week.